When you think of Star Trek to motion picture, you think of the Enterprise and Dry Dock. Deltons, space clouds, and pastel uniforms. Lots of pastel uniforms. But did you know that the first Star Trek movie was originally going to be about something radically different? It was called Planet of the Titans, and this is its story. By the late 70s, reruns of the original series had become a popular staple on American television. This helped Star Trek develop a cult following, greater than its popularity during its original run. Capitalizing on that popularity, series creator Gene Roddenberry sought to revive the franchise. Hugh, Planet of the Titans. The writers of the film would be Chris Bryant and Alan Scott. Scott would later go on to create the hit Netflix show The Queen's Gambit of all things. As they began working on a script, Philip Kaufman was hired to direct. Bryant and Scott would find themselves caught between Roddenberry and Kaufman's conflicting visions of what the film should be. But more on that later. The movie opens with the Enterprise racing to rescue the USS Da Vinci, a Federation starship in distress. The Enterprise arrives too late. The Da Vinci itself is gone, but some of its crew managed to reach their escape pods. While the Da Vinci crew is being rescued, Kirk is subjected to an electrochemical shock to his brain, which brings on erratic behavior, culminating in him commandeering a shuttlecraft and taking it towards a black hole. He vanishes without a trace, and after a lengthy search, Spock has no choice but to order the Enterprise home. Three years later, the Enterprise, refitted as a new crew. Spock has resigned from Starfleet in disgrace and is on Vulcan, purging himself of his human half. The Enterprise, under command of one Captain Gregory Westlake, is ordered to the location where Kirk disappeared. A planet has been discovered there, one that promises to be the mythical planet of the Titans, the home of a lost race with superior technology. However, the planet is about to be destroyed by the black hole. The Klingons are also aware of the situation, and the Enterprise must rescue the Titans before the Klingons get their hands on that technology, because whoever succeeds will have the power to control the destiny of the known galaxy. The Enterprise makes a detour to Vulcan to pick up Spock, who at first refuses to go. Spock takes a Vulcan precognition test, revealing his own death, indicating that he must go with the Enterprise in order to fulfill his destiny. The Enterprise arrives at the planet of the Titans, finding it partially visible. They attempt to orbit the planet, encountering the Klingons and becoming caught in the hidden world's force fields. Facing certain destruction, the saucer of the Enterprise separates from the rest of the ship, allowing the engineering hull to get free while the saucer crashes on the planet. The crew find the surface of the planet to be wild and inhospitable, with ancient cities encased in walls of fire. Spock is reunited with Kirk, who has existed as a wild man with other trapped beings. Spock is able to restore Kirk's sanity through a mind meld, and they make their way to something called the Superbrain Stonehenge. Here they discover the rulers of this planet, not the benevolent Titans, but a dangerous and corrupt lesser race called the Signans, who claim to have destroyed the Titans long ago. In an attempt to escape from the Signans, who have transported on board before the saucer lifted off to rejoin with the ship, Kirk orders the Enterprise into the black hole with the Klingons in hot pursuit. The Federation starship is badly damaged by the journey through the collapsed star and the Signans, along with the Klingon ship, are destroyed. The Enterprise emerges from the black hole, oddly enough, in an orbit around Earth. The Enterprise crew beam down to the surface, only to discover they are in Cro-Magnon times. Kirk, Spock, McCoy and the others are in fact the Titans of Legend, the fire they bring being caused by a phaser blast. This is the gift our heroes, these technological travelers that are the crew of the Enterprise, give to mankind. Brian Scott's script kept evolving over time, receiving input from so many collaborators in addition to the two writers that it hardly seemed anything like the story that had been approved by Paramount. So when they submitted the script in April of 1977, it was quickly rejected. After the script was rejected, Bryant and Scott quit, and Kaufman started rewriting the script himself. Kaufman wanted to focus on Spock, and a Klingon character he envisioned being played by the legendary Japanese actor Toshiro Mifune. Ultimately, Kaufman's script was never completed, as Paramount pulled the plug on the project in May 1977, just weeks before the release of Star Wars. Various reasons have been cited for the cancellation, including a regime change at Paramount, and that the executives thought they had missed their window due to Star Wars' imminent release. Whatever it was, Paramount immediately changed course and launched a plan to take Star Trek back to television via a new network as Star Trek Phase 2. This would eventually be scrapped as well, in favor of the Star Trek the motion picture that we ultimately got. But that's a story for another time. After this, Planet of the Titans quietly faded into obscurity, with only a few elements making their way into future Star Trek. Several small study models of the Enterprise designs were created during the project's short life, two of which made an appearance in later Star Trek productions. The first of the models is partially visible behind the interior hub of the space dock in Star Trek III, the search for Spock, when the Enterprise enters. The other model was present as a decommissioned ship, in Starfleet Surplus Depot in the Next Generation episode Unification 1. Ralph McQuarrie's concept of an asteroid space dock later became the primary inspiration for the Tholian asteroid dock, featured in Enterprise Season 4 episodes in the Mirror Darkly 1 and 2. 
Land of the Titans Triangular Enterprise also inspired the design of Star Trek Discovery's lead ship. The teaser trailer for the show even paid homage to Macquarie's asteroid base. I'm Captain Robo, and that concludes the story of Star Trek Planet of the Titans. This was a new style of video for me, so if you want to see more videos like this, please give this video a like. Finally, here's my question for you. Would this have been a more interesting movie than the Star Trek motion picture that we ultimately got? Let me know in the comments down below.